Bonjour, my petite Shifflet, Amber here, and I kind of wanted to film something a little different today. Um, first of all, I'm very sorry that I'm very nasally, but we love pollen, allergy season. As we all know, we are all collectively going through a time right now, a scary time, a stressful time. I personally am not handling it very well. I deal with a lot of um, health anxiety in general, so right now I'm not thriving, you know? The way I've always sort of coped with anything, and I, I'm sure a lot of us in the book community can agree, is through books and reading and escapism. So today, I just kind of wanted to share some of the books that I am, that I'm reading and hoping to read during this time that will hopefully help me not be obsessed with everything that's going on on the news and on my timeline and whatnot. I mean, hopefully this will give you some, some reading ideas also. Okay, so the first one I'm going to share is actually a book I finished reading recent, very recently. Thoroughly enjoyed my time in the world. It is A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kimmerer, and this is the sequel to A Curse So Dark and Lonely. So if you're going to take any suggestions from this list, obviously start with A Curse So Dark and Lonely, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, which with, I guess, a more modern twist to it. I'm not going to go into too many details about the books themselves because we'll be here forever. If you are a regular on this channel, you know it's no secret how much I love retellings and I can, I feel like that is a good place for me to just lose myself in a world, one where a story I'm semi-familiar with and to see how there it, it can be twisted and made into something new. I th really absolutely, I adored the first book in this series so I've been anticipating getting to book two. I love the world of Emberfall. I love Beauty and the Beast. That was what I was supposed to say after <laughs> me loving retellings. I also have always loved Beauty and the Beast. So seeing that story, one, with a protagonist from our world and to see how she handles not only being thrust into this curse but also being thrust into this whole other fantastical world. So um I love I love the world of Emberfall. I love the characters that Bridget has created. So I have enjoyed my time with them recently. So usually when my brain is kind of overwhelmed or I'm in sort of a funk, lately I have been resorting back to or resorting to con adult contemporary romance. Still a very new thing for me and still wild for me to say, but I have really been enjoying some adult contemporary romance and and, and especially like I said, when you're overwhelmed or in a funk or just need to uh, clear your mind from anything too heavy, it's always fun to just like jump into some two people being ridiculous and then, you know, everybody could use with a little love in their life, right? me saying that that's wild i like reading about other people going through it but not necessarily me i'm currently working my way through the reluctant royals series by Alyssa cole i recently read a princess in theory which is the first the first one in that series and then after reading uh a prince on paper which is the third one a few months ago so i've restarted the series i also absolutely adored get a life chloe brown and can't wait for um, take a hint Danny Brown which is about Chloe's sister. Also I can get through them quickly. It doesn't require too much of me as far as the concentration and retaining a bunch of story world building, character building, all that jazz. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. I, but that was not what I was intending to say. So next I'm going to talk about the books that I'm currently working through which is a reread. So one, that's easy. It's something I'm already very, very familiar with. And it's New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. I started my Twilight reread about a year ago, actually. There's a whole vlog of me rereading Twilight for the first time in years. So now I have been working on New Moon. It's taken a little longer than 
Um, I wanted it to look longer than it took to read through Twilight, but I've also been reading other things. But like I said, I'm very familiar with these stories and that paired with the whole nostalgia of this story and the reading experience and the fun I'm having vlogging my time reading it and like my reactions, it is very helpful, very beneficial, and I'm enjoying myself reading this book. Okay, so I completely forgot that there is a webtoon for The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Atia, which once again, if you're not a stranger to this channel, you know that that is one of my favorite books of all time. I, mm, when I finally met Renee back in October, the first thing that I had to say was how much I love Khalid, because it is what it is. So I'm going through the webtoon uh, of the Wrath and the Dawn. The art is beautiful. And I just, I'm already loving my babies again. And just, I love seeing, like visually seeing the story outside of my head, you know? Once again, familiarity, nostalgia, a book that I absolutely adore. And, you know, Khalid. So next, I'm hoping that during this time I will pick up An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. This book was gifted to me for my birthday. Thank you, Ashley. And I always need a new fantasy in my life. These books are super hyped. I think the new one's coming, the final one is coming out soon. So I think I would love to binge a new series when I am avoiding a crisis. Recently, I read Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson after two years, two years after reading, allegedly. So one, I would like to read this next book just to have read all of her released novels. But two, because I feel like it's going to be not as heavy, I guess, as the other two. And it's Let Me Hear a Rhyme. I love this cover, I love the color. I mean, just looking at it makes me feel brighter and happier. Like I said, I think some more, I guess contemporary is a good word to use. Books could definitely be beneficial, nothing overly overwhelming or too, too much. It's early. I just noticed her, her puff puffs in me. And I, I would also like to finally have like I would have this as a buffer before Grown comes out in September and destroys me because I know it's going to. Also sticking with more contemporary, lighter, less complicated books than fantasy novels, we have Color Me In by Natasha Diaz, another one that like just feels, looking at it makes me feel more uplifted. <laughs> I've been meaning to read this since last summer I guess um this just gives me summary spring and summery vibes so I think this will be a nice change nice something easy to fall into and just chill out with you know I don't know what I'm saying and the last book that I hope to read during all of this is another sequel and it's Wild Savage Stars by Christina Perez. This is the sequel to Sweet Black Waves, which I loved. Another retelling. That is a retelling, once again, so if you're going to take a suggestion, start with that one. That is a Tristan and Isol retelling, and I loved it so much. It's such an underrated book. I picked it up on a whim at BookCon two years, like back whenever I went to BookCon and didn't expect to love it as much as I did. I really, really did. So I'm excited to be back in this world to see where this story goes next, um, be back with characters that I, I fell in love with and want to see the best for, <laughs> even though this is a sequel, so that rarely happens, especially when there's another book coming afterwards. But it, it will be nice though. Any, any drama and turmoil that happens not be in my world you know before i end this video i also want to talk about some 2020 spring 2020 releases um i was about to say spring 2020 releases that are coming out in spring that's what that means because i know 
with all of the cancellation of events and book tours and just anything that uh, could be used to promote books. I know authors are going through it right now, specifically debut authors. Not all of the books on this list are by debut authors, but definitely, definitely if you can support them. Also, I think if you, any promotion I think will help also. So on April 14th, we have Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifueko. So this this one follows Tarsai, who basically is always long for family. She, she's been raised basically in isolation. Then her mother sends her to the capital with the goal of to compete with um, other children to be chosen as one of the crown princess council. But her plan is for her, for Tarsai to become a part of, a member of the council, gain the crown princess trust and then kill him. But Tarsai doesn't want to just be like her mother's pawn, especially when she's always craved belonging and family and I'm assuming like the council and being trusted by the crown prince is like a way to achieve that. So I'm very interested to see how that plays out. The cover is so pretty. I'm very excited for some more black girl magic in my life. Like I said that comes out on April 14th. Uh, so next on April 21st The Silence of Bone by The Silence of Bones by June Hur comes out. This takes place in Korea in 1800. It says homesick and orphaned 16 year old seal is living out the ancient curse. May you live in interesting times. Indentured to the police borough, bureau, I can read. She's been tasked with assisting a well respected young inspector with the investigation into the politically charged murder of a noblewoman. As they delve deeper into the dead woman's secrets, Seal forms an unlikely bond of friendship with the inspector, but her loyalty is tested when he becomes the prime suspect and Seal may be the only one capable of discovering what truly happened on the night of the murder. But in a land where silence and obedience are valued above all else, curiosity can be deadly. June Hur's elegant and haunting debut, The Silence of Bones, is a bloody tale perfect for fans of Carrie Maniscalco and Renee Atia. I am a fan of both of those authors. April 21st is when that comes out. Okay moving on to May. First we have Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Bashardos and this is like an original fairy tale. For those fairy tales, shocker! I have a once upon a time, I have two once upon a time tattoos which is a show all about fairy tales in our world. Anyway, main character has been cursed to be poisonous to the touch. There was and there was not. All As all stories began, a princess cursed to be poisonous to the touch. But for Soraya, who has lived her life hidden away apart from her family, safe only in her gardens, it's not just a story. As the day of her twin brother's wedding approaches, Soraya must decide if she's willing to step outside of the shadows for the first time. Out of the shadows. Sorry. <laughs> Below in the dungeon is a demon who holds knowledge that she craves. The answer to her freedom and above is a young man who isn't afraid of her, whose eyes linger not with fear but with understanding of who she is beneath the poison. Soraya thought she knew her place in the world but when her choices lead to consequences she never imagined she begins to question who she is and who she's becoming, human or demon, princess or monster. And like I said that comes out on May 12th. The next book comes out on May 26th and that is The Paper Girls of Paris by Jordan Taylor. I'm just gonna read this from here because we know I'm not good at summarizing. <laughs> It says now, 16 year old Alice is spending the summer in Paris but she isn't there for pastries and walks along the Seine. When her grandmother passes away two months ago, she left Alice an apartment in France that no one knew existed, an apartment that has been locked for more than 70 years. Alice is determined to find out why the apartment was abandoned and why her grandmother never once mentioned the family she left behind when she moved to America after World War II. With the help of Paul, a charming Parisian student, she sets out to discover the truth. However, the more time she spends digging through the mysteries of the past, the more she realizes there are secrets in the present that her family is still refusing to talk about. Then, 16-year-old Adeline doesn't recognize Paris anymore. Everywhere she looks, there are Nazis, and every day brings a new horror of life under the occupation. When she meets Luke, the dashing and enigmatic leader of a resistance group, Adeline 
feel she finally has a chance to fight back, but keeping up the appearance of being a much admired socialite while working to undermine the Nazis is more complicated than she could have imagined. As the war goes on, Adeline finds herself having to make more and more compromises to her safety, to her reputation, and to her relationships with the people she loves the most. I have mentioned before many a time, I love historical fiction. I read a ton. I have read a ton. Um, because I, I've shifted sort of more into fantasy and specifically YA fantasy but I before I really started this channel I read a lot of historical fiction and particularly World War II historical fiction so this is right up my alley it takes place in Paris I'm excited next is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna which also comes out on May 26th another black girl magic Please don't let me down. 16 year old Decca lives in fear and anticipation of the blood ceremony that would well, that, wow, that will determine whether she will become a member of her village. Already different from everyone else because of her unnatural intuition, Decca prays for red blood so she can finally feel she belongs. But on the day of the ceremony, her blood runs gold, the color of impurity, and Decca knows she will face a consequence worse than death. Then a mysterious woman comes to her with a choice. Stay in the village and submit to her fate or leave to fight for the emperor and an army of girls just like her. They are called Alaki, near immortals with rare gifts, and they are the only ones who can stop the empire's greatest threat. Knowing the dangers that lie ahead, yet yearning for acceptance, Decca decides to leave the only life she's ever known. But as she journeys to the capital to train for the biggest battle of her life, she will discover that the Great Walled City holds many surprises. Nothing and no one are quite what they seem to be, not even Decca herself. Sign me up. I'm ready. I'm ready. I actually have an arc of this. I have an e-arc of this um, on my Kindle. So I need to actually read that soon. And once again, that comes out May 26th. Now I have two honorable mentions. The first one, they're not in chronological order. The first one comes out May 5th and it's Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I know Elizabeth Acevedo is like a bigger author but I still want to promote her in this book because I adored The Poet X and With Fire on High. And this is the, uh, the story of two sisters who find out their sister. Mino Rios lives for the summers when her father visits her in the Dominican Republic, but this time on the day when his plane is supposed to land, Camino arrives at the airport to see crowds of crying people. In New York, Yahira Rios is called to the principal's office where her mother is waiting to tell her that her father, her hero, has died in a plane crash. Separated by distance and poppy secrets, the two girls are forced to face a new reality in which their father is dead and their lives are forever altered. And then, when it seems like they've lost everything of their father, they learn of each other. Poppy's death uncovers all the painful truths he kept hidden and the love he divided across an ocean. And now Camino and Yahira are both left to grapple with what this new sister means to them and what it will now take to keep their dreams alive. In a dual narrative novel and verse that brims with both grief and love, award-winning and best-selling author Elizabeth Acevedo writes about the devastation of loss, the difficulty of forgiveness, and the bittersweet bonds that shape our lives. And I'm really, really interested to see how it's going to be dual perspective and in verse, how she's going to capture two separate voices in verse, you know? And the last book that I'm going to mention is comes out April 14th and I'm really irritated that I'm irritated but like it has to be done that the book tour has been postponed because it's Redemption Prep by my pal Samuel Miller who I'm very very proud of. Says everyone knows Emma, Nisha is her best friend, Aiden's her basketball star boyfriend, and Evan's her shadow following Emma's every move. She stands out, which is hard to do at Redemption Prep, a school where every student has been handpicked to attend its remote campus in the forests of Utah. So when she goes missing in plain sight, everyone notices and everyone becomes a suspect, especially at a school with strict rules. Don't skip mass, don't break curfew, don't go into the woods. I feel like she did all three. Anyway, Emma's disappearance ignites an investigation and Nisha, Aiden, and Evan all want to find her for different reasons but they each have their own secrets to hide, and not everyone wants Emma to be found. As, they, as the search continues, the students realize that they're not the only ones trying to hide something. Redemption Prep has secrets too, secrets bigger than any of the students could have imagined, and Emma could be the key to finding out the truth if anyone can find her. So this is significantly darker than uh, Sam's first book, A Light Too Bright, which came out in 2000, 
2017? 18? 2018? It's 2000 something. But yes, I'm super, super, super excited about this book. I've known Samson for seven years now. And I had, prior to um, A Light to Pray, I've been like desperate for him to write a book. And now he's coming out with a second. And I am so proud and like I was like that's my friend go best friend that's my best friend anyway <laughs> so that comes out April 14th pre-order it if you haven't done so already thanks that's it those are some of the books that I'm excited to read spring 2020 or I'm excited to come out spring 2020 if you are interested in any of those books I will leave the pre-order links below that being said during this time not only are authors going through it but indie bookstores are going through it also with the closings and social distancing quarantines whatnot businesses having to be closed non-essential businesses having to be closed if you are able to uh, please consider shopping indie for um like at your local indie bookstore or your favorite indie bookstore online that's what I meant regardless because it's not like you're going out to go to the store anyway I forgot what I was going to say I know you can use IndieBound to find indie bookstores near you so I'll, I'll just link a bunch of information down below but thank you for watching this video I hope you are doing well I hope you're being kind to yourself and others and I hope you're washing your hands disinfecting your phones just being very careful staying inside as much as possible it's it's scary but we are we are all going through this together but anyway thank you for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you feel like it let me know what books you are using what books you're escaping into what 2020 spring 2020 releases you're looking forward to down there down in the comments if you like me, feel free to subscribe. All my places are down here so you can follow me. I'll follow you back and we can be buzzed. And I'll see you very soon.